Hello everyone, welcome to another Friday Closeout. I'm excited today because we are going to be diving into our series on the Sermon on the Mount, one of the most foundational few chapters of Scripture for those who follow Jesus. And today we're going to be looking at one of the passages that you've probably heard before if you've spent any time in the church. And if you haven't, well, all the more exciting because I'm going to introduce you to some of the foundational ideas and concepts of what it means to be a Christian and what it means to follow Jesus. So let's dive right in. We're going to look at Matthew 5, starting in verse 2, and this is a passage of Scripture known as the Beatitudes. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Now, there's a lot going on in this verse or in this passage. In fact, you could pause in this passage and probably spend a solid week just on each individual sentence. Blessed are the dot, dot, dot. And we could just sit there and we could unpack each one. And wow, there's so much in there. Now, the culture in Jesus' day, while it was 2,000 years ago and change, was not all that different than ours. Now, I know what you're saying. Well, hold on. There's no cars. There's no computers. There's no internet. There's no phones. People are riding on donkeys, you know, not driving in Hondas, or at least I drive a Honda. Maybe you drive something a little more fancy. But the same motivation, the same things that drove people then tend to be the same things that drive things now. It just looks different now than it did then. Our, our hearts are still the same. The things that uh, appeal to us, that drive us, are still the same. And so the folks in Jesus' day, they tended to look up to and exalt the same things that we do. So if you were wealthy, if you were in a position of power or prestige, people tended to look up to those folks, to strive to be like those folks. Today, we have that same thing. We have a, a celebrity culture. There would have been a, a celebrity culture of sorts back then as well. And we tend to, to want to be like those people, to model our lives like those people, to uh, to make our Instagram look like those people, right? We call them influencers today. And those are the folks who have the power. They've got the wealth. They've got the influence. And we're like, man, I want to be like that person. But did you notice what Jesus says in these opening verses of the Sermon on the Mount? He says things like, blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek. When I think of meek, you know, I, I think of someone who's, you know, they're not out there doing their own thing, thinking about themselves, just trying to get ahead. You know, they're, they're doing the grind, right? They're getting out there and, um, and working hard and, and they're, they're doing it, for, you know, for that paycheck. Got to earn that buck. And Jesus says, blessed are the meek. 
Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Like they're pursuing righteousness. They're pursuing holiness. Blessed are those people. Huh. Blessed are the merciful. Wow. I mean, I don't know about you, but a lot of times our culture is not very merciful. You get on your favorite social media account and it's all about you know, dropping that dank meme or getting that sick burn in there, you know, that comment, oh yeah, you know, I'm going to hit him with that right now. But Jesus said, blessed are the merciful. When somebody wrongs you, when somebody says something that offends you, blessed are the merciful. Huh. Blessed are the pure in heart. Wow, that one hits a little hard, doesn't it? Because it's so easy for for us to be distracted by things that, that are just not good for us, to fill our mind and to fill our soul with things that aren't healthy. The things that we watch, the things that we listen to, um, social media, it's just, it's rampant, right? It's all over the place. But Jesus says, blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the peacemakers. So you're not just meek, but you're someone who actively engages in the pursuit of peace. Peace in your workplace. Peace in your community. Peace in your country. Wow. I don't know about you, but it has felt like there's there's not a lot of peace lately. Like my heart has not felt that peaceful especially in recent weeks. But Jesus says, blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who are persecuted. Now, we don't experience a lot of that as Christians uh, in in America. We're very, very blessed. Religious liberty in our country, not just for Uh, for folks like me who are Christians, but for all religions, is an incredible blessing and not something that every culture has. But it is enshrined into our founding documents, religious liberty. But Jesus says, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Blessed are those who are persecuted, who endure suffering because they are doing the right thing. Now, if you're out there being foolish or being stupid and the hammer gets dropped on you because of that, no, that's something different. But Jesus says, when you're following me, when you're modeling your life after me and my teaching, when you're trying to be my disciple, and because of that, the hammer gets dropped on you, Jesus says, blessed are you. Huh. Blessed are you when others revile you. When people say hurtful or spiteful things about you, has that ever happened to you? Has somebody ever said something that hurt you? I mean, it just felt like a punch in the gut. Jesus says, blessed are you when that happens on my account. Rejoice and be glad. For even though you're not rewarded here, your reward is great in heaven. So what is going on in all these verses? What is Jesus saying that is different about being a follower of him and modeling your life after him and being a part of a community where Jesus is the central part of that community? He says this is this weird kind of upside down kingdom where the things that everything else in the world and everything else in the culture values that influence the power, the prestige, the wealth, that that everybody says that you need to pursue these things. These are what you need to be happy. These are what you need to be blessed. And Jesus says, no, we're going to flip that script on its head. Because when you follow me, it's the peacemakers, it's the meek, it's the persecuted, it's the reviled, it's the people who are mourning These are the people in the kingdom of God who are blessed. Wow. I mean, there is so much there. And we'll keep looking at this in the weeks to come. 
I hope you'll spend a few minutes this weekend thinking about what the passage says that we just read, and that you'll join me next week as we spend some more time looking at the Sermon on the Mount and learning more about what it means to be a follower of Jesus. I hope you have a great weekend. I'll see you next time. Go in peace.